with the boundary of sphere with folding divergence is 4D manifold. The dimension of a black hole can be analyzed by using the fact that a black hole has folding divergence. Ha, this is black hole mathematica. In this lecture, I will explain black hole with topology. In this channel, I will show the boundary of sphere with volume divergence is 4D manifold. And using this fact, I will show you the topology of black hole is 5 dimension. And I will show ADCFT correspondence theory in a topological way. This is a black hole with a lot of photons which are rotating around black hole before they get absorbed to black hole. Space where even a photon cannot get out is a definition of black hole. Topological geometry is to analyze geometry with topology. And here the number of hole is important because only with a hole the topology can be classified. Black hole topology. This is a topology of black hole which is made of hyperbola and surface of sphere. Wave on surface of the sphere gets into black hole as time goes on and the time has a tide because wave has a tide and the tide is h bar k over 2 pi. So this picture represents wave with tide gets into black hole and shrunken. So hyperbola represents gravity. Surface of sphere represents the wave with the tide. And this means there is a mechanical energy between gravity and energy, wave, which is about ADS CFT correspondence theory. In this black hole membrane, the wave has tie, so the time repeat happens like this. And this wave gets shrunken by tidal force as time goes on. And the time repeat is shown as following picture. Duck is an event on the surface of black hole and as it gets into singularity, it repeats its action. As we learn topology of black hole, we can easily understand the movie Interstellar, which is full of physical story. And also, we can easily find physical force like sending information from the future to past without proper structure. These are papers about black hole which represent how important black hole is in modern physics. They are famous physicists in relativity theory and quantum mechanics. They are like rock star in physics. Do you know what they hate most in equations? They hate these so much that every time they see these in equation, they substitute it to other number. First, they hate infinity in equation. So every time they see infinity, they use free transform and change it to a real number. And they hate zero. Every time they see zero, they substitute it to other small number, because there is no zero, zero in nature. Nature is a rather fuzzy group more than a discrete group. But there is only one place where physicists admit infinity and zero naturally. It is black hole. There are zero and infinity. The curvature of gravity near singularity is infinity, and the size of singularity point is zero, which are important in topology. Black hole has an infinite curvature, so there is UV divergence in black hole. When you flash light from event horizon to singularity, the wavelength is extended by tidal force, which is made by infinite curvature, so that is why there is a UV divergence. And this is always true no matter black hole has rotation or charge. In here, I will use topological tools called homeomorphism. This is a good way to analyze topology. Open set is a main topic in topology. Uh, here, we, here we will use matrix partial open set. Black hole topology. ADCFT correspondence theory makes this topology be true. And according to CFT of black hole, sphere is true for black hole topology because CFTS has four topology. 
For last, here is the structure of black hole. You can see event horizon and singularity as a surface and surface of center of black hole. In next lecture, I will prove the topology for black hole, which I said today. And for that, we will have topology lecture first, and this will lead us to understand black hole better. Hi, <laughs> this is Black Hole Mathematica, where we analyze black hole with topology. In this lecture, I will explain about topology for black hole, and to do that, I will explain a paper, the boundary of a sphere with volume divergence, it is 4D manifold. Here is abstract. Abstract. We show this three-dimensional sphere with a volume divergence has a 4D manifold. So the bulk of the sphere is 5-dimensional, and using the fact, we can show that black hole has 4-dimensional theater boundary. Black hole has a flat surface, the CFT, and black hole has a 5-dimensional bulk, the ADS, because black hole has a volume divergence. This is a topology for black hole surface, CFT. This is for stationary wave in surface of black hole. All particles which is absorbed to black hole have wave in surface of black hole. And this is for ADS5, which represents the curvature of black hole. Every particle in black hole should be under gravity and have an infinite curvature near singularity. And the CFT ADS5 should have correspondence, so the above picture is needed to explain black hole. Introduction In mathematical problem in physics, the concept of infinity is used a lot. And some of that is beyond our intuition. Let's look at the study of infinity. If we sum all number, or natural numbers, we should get infinity. But if the sum should be a finite number for certain regions, then it should be minus 1 per 12. This is called Raman's summation because he did it. This is quite weird because he think summation of natural number is infinite. And also summation of positive number is positive, but it is finite and negative. But if you assume the summation to be infinite, the summation should be minus and finite. And this can be proven with physical fact. In a string theory, the zero point energy of a closed string only has a finite and positive value only when the sum of natural number is minus 1 per 12. AC is the zero point energy of a closed string if the sum of all natural numbers is not negative and finite. AC should be negative and finite, but it contradicts our intuition. Because if the energy is negative, all particles should be lighter as they get faster. And this makes every particle should learn faster than light. But this is not true. For example, as V0.8C, 1 per gamma is 1.66. And when m is negative, m prime is bigger than m, which is beyond our intuition. When Einstein has velocity of 0.2 light velocity, uh, he becomes black hole. But if summation is not minus, he can have time travel later and then become black hole. But time travel is out of our sense. So velocity should be smaller than light velocity. So as the summation is positive, the velocity of every particle should be bigger than light, and this means there exists a tachyon which is out of our intuition. Because tachyon only exists with duality inside electron and black hole. As a conclusion, our nature only exists nature only when the summation of natural number is minus 1 per 12. In this way, we can see that the extraordinary thought about infinity is necessary to understand our universe. Here, we will show another thought about infinity that the boundary of a three-dimensional sphere with volume divergence is four-dimensional and the bulk of that sphere should be five-dimensional. This idea is similar to the first thought because the sphere with volume divergence should be bigger than a sphere with any radius and if the sphere has a boundary, it means the sphere is bounded by with a finite range and with the same logic of the sum of natural numbers, if a sphere with volume divergence should have a boundary, then the dimension of the boundary should be full. And this fact can be applied to black hole with a similar way that the principle of natural number theorem is applied to string theory. It is already known that a black hole has a volume divergence and four-dimensional boundary. 
And using the word fat, we can show black holes have a four dimensional boundary because black holes have a volume, volume divergence. First, we will show that a sphere with volume divergence should have a four dimensional boundary. And I will prove what I have told. Main result. The dimension of a sphere is volume divergence. Notification. S3D is a sphere with volume divergence, and DS3D is a boundary of a sphere with volume divergence. And S31 is a sphere with volume 1, and DS31 is a boundary of a sphere with volume 1. If DS3D exists, DS3D is homeomorphic is 4 dimensional Euclidean space. If DS3D exists, DS3D exi is homeomorphic with 4 dimensional Euclidean space. 4D Euclidean space is a metric space with 4, e four independent variables. And this is a usual 4 dimensional space we usually say. So, we can say DS3D is 4D. To show they are homeomorphic, we must show first that there is a function from DS3D to 4 dimensional Euclidean space, and the function should be one to one correspondence, and both the function and each inverse function should be continuous. To do that, we define the spherical coordinate inside the S3D, assume three independent vectors which originate in the center of S3D, and within orthography and normalization, these vectors can make a rectangular coordinate system, and this three-dimensional rectangular coordinate system can be translated into three-dimensional three spherical coordinate. Now, in this spherical coordinate, we can define an angle theta phi. And within this angle, we can pr project a point from the center of S3D to DS3D. Then I can call the projected point as theta phi, and we will call this point as A. First, we will show that DS3D has four independent variables. And I will call a point near A within distance L, which is on DS3D as B. Then B is on the surface. So to express B, I can use polar coordinate, which originate at A. So B is expressed as omega L, where L is a finite length from A, and omega is an angle which specifies a specific point within a distance L from A. And to express B, we first define A, so B is expressed as theta phi omega L, which is a sum of coordinate of theta phi and omega L. Now, we will show the four coordinates are independent. Trivially, theta phi is independent and so is omega L, so we should show that theta phi is independent with omega L. First, CL, the final length between A and B. Uh, we will show that if L can be expressed with theta phi, then there exists a contradiction. Assume L was expressed with theta phi, and the equation expressing the area of this field is 4 pi r square, and r is infinite, so the area of this field should be infinite. And if we express an area of the circle inside, it is 4 pi r squared delta theta delta phi. This is by multiplying the radian to the area of this VD. But multiplying number to infinite value produces infinite value. And the area of circle within the radius L is finite. So there exists a contradiction when we assume L is expressed with theta phi. So L and theta phi are independent. Now, we will show that omega and theta phi are independent. First, assume omega can be expressed as theta phi, and assume a function like this and this, and r is a length value in spherical coordinate system of coordinate of S3D, and i is a length value in spherical coordinate of S3-1, and theta phi is the angle value in spherical coordinate of both systems, and this, and when r is infinite, i is 1. And r is the length from origin in the S3D system, and i is the length from origin in the S3-1. And f is a function which goes from sphere to sphere, so the angle value theta phi on the boundary of a sphere is conserved within f. And within f, the length value is conserved within regard to the small and large relation. And with f, the final circle in the DS3D goes to a point in the DS3-1, which we will prove now. The value of theta 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 phi is conserved in the f and because f conserves the value of theta phi. And the final circle on the DS3D is always smaller than 4 pi r squared theta 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 phi, which is infinite. 
and because theta phi is conserved with a in f, the value of 4 pi r square delta theta delta phi in t s v d becomes 4 pi delta theta delta phi within f. So f value of the final circle on the d s v d should always be smaller than 4 pi delta theta delta phi, and the circle which is smaller than every other circle is the circle with zero size. So the circle which has finite f value on the DSVD goes to a point on the DSV1. And here, omega is an angle value which is concerned within function f and we assumed omega can be expressed with theta phi. And as concerns theta phi, then when a finite circle on the DSVD goes to a point on the DSV1 within f, the omega value which is expressed as theta phi concerns then the point on the DSV1 should have omega value which is expressed as theta phi and the function f as inverse function like this and when i is 1, i is infinite this means the point goes to a two-dimensional field with two, uh, inverse f and it is a contradiction to the fact that f is one-to-one -one correspondence and has inverse function so omega and theta phi are independent so theta phi omega r expressed on DSVD are four independent variables, and consider the next dig function, and this one, and its inverse function is like this. Then f is a function from DSVD to four-dimensional Euclidean space, and it has one term correspondence and it's continuous. And inverse f is a function from four-dimensional Euclidean space to DSVD, and it has one term correspondence and it's continuous. So this with this four dimensional manifold. Seven two point one point two. Bulk of SVD is five dimensional. We will use Poincaré definition. Let's see the definition of a dimension by only to Poincaré. One dimension is of zero dimensional section, two dimension has a one dimensional section, and three dimension has a two dimensional section, and four dimension can be defined as a body whose section is for three dimension. And by mathematical induction, five dimension can be defined as a body whose section is four dimensional. Now let's put this definition to theorem 2.1.1. Delta SVD is a section of SVD and delta SVD is a four four D manifold. So the bulk of SVD is five dimensional. Theorem 2.1.3 A circle with finite area on a DSVD is a plane. This 3D has a curvature as 1 per r, and r, is, r has an infinite value. So the curvature of this 3D is 0, so the infinite circle of this 3D is on the plane. So we proved the sphere with volume divergence is 5 dimensional, and the surface is 4D plane. Next time, I will prove black hole has a sphere with infinite curvature, so black hole has 4D plane surface and 5D bulk. And in this way, I will prove ads cft correspondence theory with the mechanical energy. Hi, this is Black Hole Mathematica. Now I will explain the topological geometry of black hole using topology of last lecture. And using the topology, I will explain ads cft correspondence theory. 2.2 Black hole with a volume divergence. The bulk of black hole have Volume divergence. The next equation is about ADS space time metric of a black hole's bulk. Local proper time and proper length as C are like this. The relation between energy and distance in boundary and bulk is following. Where Youngman energy is proportional to 1 per C and Youngman distance is proportional to Z. So we have these relations and we can conclude near singularity is their infinite energy which means dz can go to zero and z is an open set and this is homeomorphic to infinite lengths. So we showed UV divergence which means black hole has infinite curvature. This is a good R for the fact. Now I will prove black hole is a sphere using CFT. A CFT in 4D Minkowski space, which is the surface of black hole, has a topology of R multiplied by S3. And S3 satisfies R3 plus infinity. So a CFT can be expressed as R4 plus infinity. So and this is the same with S4, which is the boundary of 5D sphere. Topology of CFT is R multiplied by S3, and S3 is R3 plus infinity, so topology of CFT is R4 plus infinity, which is S4. So black hole CFT has a sphere topology, and this means CFT can be explained, explained as a wave within tide. 
So this is the wave on the surface of black hole which has a tide. In this membrane, the wave has tide, so the tide repeat happens like this. And the time repeat is shown as following picture. Dog is an event on the surface of black hole and as it gets into a singularity it repeats its action. So when combining ADS and CFT we have this picture. Black hole is a sphere with infinite curvature. As we make finite sphere on the finite circle of this 3D, we can have five the structure of CFT which means loop quantum gravity and using this we can decode the information of black hole. So if we can get close to black hole, we can get the data because we can decode the gravity loop near black hole. Now I will explain ADS CFT correspondence theory. In the ADS CFT correspondence theory, the gravity of bulk, which is expressed as ADS5, is expressed as a wave information of the boundary, which is expressed as CFT. And there should be a homeomorphic correspondence between ADS5 and CFT. And the way to show this relation is the same as the way we prove SVD is 5 dimensional. When a particle gets into black hole, it has a topology of a sphere's surface multiplied by hyperbola. It means a particle gets absorbed by gravity, which explains hyperbolic topology. And the particle has a wave effect, which explains spherical topology. In this way, particle has a mechanical energy as wave energy and gravity energy. So gravity energy can be expressed as wave energy and wave energy can be expressed as gravity energy which is ADS CFT correspondence theory and this uses spherical system when it is about wave energy. This uses hyperbolic topology when it is about volume divergence. So this is same with the way I proved DSVD is four dimensional. And this ADS CFT correspondence involves Bekenstein Hawking entropy theory. Because Hawking entropy says that information of black hole is recorded in the surface of black hole, and ADCF correspondence theory says the gravity information of black hole is recorded in the surface of black hole as a shape of wave. So ADCF correspondence theory is a generalization of Hawking entropy. In, in, in above equation, A is on the surface area of black hole and proportional to entropy. Okay, and ADS-CFT correspondence theory also includes network theory, where network in surface is shown as string in bulk. This is the three-dimensional explanation of network. This is a network among three particles. This is a network which is so strong that the string has a depth to singularity. ADS-CFT theory is so important because it is needed when it study quantum information, quantum metaphysics, and black hole quantum gravity. So in the next lecture, I will discuss what I have told. This final lecture and I will explain what I have told before. Discussion and conclusion. Now we know the 3D sphere with volume divergence is 5 dimensional and it has a 4 dimensional boundary. And we found that CFT of black hole is of S4 which is the boundary of 5 dimensional sphere. And it is already known as a UV divergence that the black hole has a volume divergence. So we can say the black hole has a four dimensional boundary because it has a volume divergence. And CFT is a boundary of black hole, and by Planck's definition about dimension, the bulk of black hole should be five dimensional. And actually, a dimension of the bulk is five dimensional, and the bulk is called as ADS5. And CFT is a flat space which is called as Minkowski space, and this is because the boundary of a sphere with volume divergence is flat as we see in the theorem 2.1.3. And in the ADS CFT correspondence, the gravity of bulk is ex expressed as a wave information of the boundary. This means the location information of bulk is e expressed as a wave information of boundary. And this is same with the way we prove that boundary of bulk with volume divergence is four dimensional. So we can conclude black hole property like ADCF correspondence theory is because black hole has a volume divergence. Now we know how black hole looks like. Uh, now we are ready to watch Interstellar.